All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm Reese, and I'm here with Hakeem and Jason. And today, the diversified gentlemen have a a definitely special guest, Julius, and he's here to talk the uh, crypto and everything you want to know about investing in crypto in the world of Bitcoin and all those uh, hot news topics that's been going on over the last couple of years. So without any further ado, Julius, I'll have you introduce yourself. What's up, everybody? I'm excited. Thank you guys for uh, having me. You know, I've been checking you guys out. I, I saw your last episode about the fight, and we, we don't have to talk about that today. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I know some people uh, probably bet some Bitcoin on that one, um, and it didn't go the way we thought. So, but uh, <laughs> so it's um it's good to be here, everybody. My name's Julius Weems. Um, uh, you know, uh, born and raised in Baltimore. My background, um, I am a entrepreneur at heart uh, in the technology industry and have had the opportunity to to do some really cool stuff and I started my career designing video games in um, Maryland and and then from that have started a, a series of companies um, over the years primarily in the technology space and that was that was where I uh, touched Bitcoin um, early on and we'll talk about that in a little bit but uh, now today I advise and and coach other large companies on how to, to be more efficient and how to solve problems. And in and, and such a disruptive time um, in the country, trying to figure out, you know, what's next and, and where do we go? And, and, and Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has been a, not just a, a investment tool, but a, a way that as an entrepreneur, it's allowed me to take care of my family and, and do some really cool things too financially. So, so excited to talk to you all about it. And so thanks for having me guys. No, awesome. No, thanks. Thanks for being here. For everybody so, out there right now, the subject, the dude that knows a lot. So take notes, get your pen and paper out. Don't just listen, take some notes. You're going to learn something. So can you, can you uh, just tell us about your background, your journey? Um, you know, as a black man, a lot of um, people that look like us don't have the path you went on. So it's just very interesting. Just, you know, a uh, 12, 13, 14 year old listening to this. How do they get from point A to point B? You know, the, the coolest thing about it is that my journey was, um, for a lot of you looking, you know, it's, if, you know, if you were brought up in, you know, I was brought up in the projects of Baltimore. And so some of you, you know, if you're old enough, you heard me have looked at the wire on Netflix oh, yeah. or something like that. Oh, Omar coming. Um, <laughs> um, but, but, you know, uh, you know I, I grew up in, in the Murphy Home projects of Baltimore, which is where they filmed that and, and grew up downtown and, you know, when you're when you, if you grew up in the projects, you didn't know it was the projects, right? Yeah. You, you go, went to the playground, you hung out, you know, and you know my my family, you know, I have family members that just you know on both good and bad sides of of that life, and um, I was I was a kid, you know, I was a kid growing up, and and one of the things and I got to share this with you guys, and I tell everybody, one of the lessons I learned, and you know, one of my two of my uncles were were involved in in, in some of the chaos just in our neighborhood and our lifestyle, and. Um, one of the things they always said to me, they said, look, you know, you need to remember one thing. Um, no matter where you are in your life, there are rules. You must learn the rules of the environment you're in. Now, when they said that, I'm young, I'm like, what are they talking about? And the whole thing was, was that it doesn't matter if you grew up in a project. It doesn't matter if you're in a boardroom. It doesn't matter if you're in a classroom. Every place you're at has a set of guidelines. And if you master the guidelines of the environment, you can be successful in any environment. And, 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 and that's something that just stuck with me because they would say it so much, right? These guys, they didn't have education. They, they, they were in the streets. They, they just knew that um, they wanted me to have an education and my cousins have educations. And they said, no matter where you're at, if you go to the best school, learn what the best do in the school. If you go to, um, you want to be an entrepreneur, follow the best people who are entrepreneurs and duplicate that before you um, go and do your own. And, and, and that carried over in my life and it allowed me to, and, and I'll just share my stories that as I got older, um, going to school, I went to Morgan State University and I went to Morgan for, for three years. Um, and I had, a, I had a son very young. And so you know, I got custody of him. So I'm, I'm a 19 year old dad with custody of a, of a one year old. And I'm sitting here like, okay, you know, but some of these rules that I learned young was, okay, now what are the rules of the environments I want to be in? And I knew business was something that 
that was happening around me. I knew that I wanted to be involved. And while I was in school, I had someone offer me an internship. And this is really cool. I, I took a guy out um, with a, a buddy of mine and he, would talk, he was talking about football. He was, and we were just back and forth. And I loved football, guys. I didn't just love it. I knew every stat, every college player. And he says, kid, you don't, kid, what are you talking about? You don't know anything. And he just started this young black guy with glasses and you know Jimmy he's from Maryland and he says he says if you really know football come to my office and I went up to Hunt Valley Maryland I was a, a junior in college and uh, I became a um, it was Disney's gaming house and they were taking Disney just purchased ABC um, and ESPN and so everything that was on television they was making they were making video games and and I got to spend some time with some incredible people, an environment I had never experienced before in video games. But again, the first thing that kicked in was that um, when you're in an environment, learn the rules of that environment and be the best. And, and I became the best in that gaming environment and learned a whole bunch. But that was where I first touched cryptocurrency. Um, and that was, that was really a, a, a special moment for me. So um, that's, that's kind of where it all started. And that journey moved on. But but I, what I say to everybody, no matter where you're at, wherever environment you're in, understand how the best people work in it and be and, and duplicate that. And when you duplicate that, that opens up windows and doors that you couldn't imagine. Something we talk about here in our podcast is changing that environment that, that leads to so much more uh, to you developing. You know, you saying that kind of reinforces that. Is that changing the environment and then understanding the rules? I mean, that's, that's some rules to live by right there. Yeah, it kind of sounds like, you know, being learning to be learn to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. And I think adapting to your environment is paramount in success. You have to adapt. You have to be able to adapt. If you don't, then you'll probably falter. Yeah, yeah definitely. So being in the military, uh, a lot of people who come in are from humble, you know, from humble beginnings, um, broken households. And you can tell some of the 18, 19 year old guys that look like us, they have a lot of issues because they're bringing that mentality from back home. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, we, we really try to try to single those guys out, pull them to the side and say, look, this is, you know, you're not, just like someone did me, yeah, you're not in Chicago no more, right? right? You gotta, <laughs> this is what you, you gotta do. And unfortunately, um, we see it every day uh, with these young rappers getting killed every day because they don't understand um, you are a professional musician. So you can't have one foot in, one foot out. Uh, that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna catch up. And you know, a lot of these promising, um, basically stars, gifted, talented kids, are dying before their prime because they are still living by the rules of the streets, but they got money behind them. They're on Spotify, you know, they got corporate money um, backing them. And unfortunately they can't, you know, break, break from, from um, that old environment, the rules of that old environment to the rules of the new environment. Yeah. No, and that, that's a huge point though, because Imagine this, guys. Imagine if everybody that looked like us that signed a recording contract, a uh, deal with the league, imagine if they knew and had the financial understanding that our counterparts have when it comes to real estate investing in stock market. <laughs> Be unstoppable. Right? Imagine <laughs> the power of it. Because we don't talk about that, right? Imagine if the, the, the multi-million dollar deals they signed, they, their first day, they say, hey, look, here's, here's, here's what I'm doing. You know, even if I don't know, I know that I need to have, have put this in real estate stock market. So I'm, I'm securing my future. And that doesn't mean you don't buy a nice car. That doesn't mean you don't buy a nice home, but it creates options. And I think that's what, what I'm passionate about is that how do we make sure that we're creating options so that we can make real long-term choices. That's it. And that's exciting. And so, um, but crypto, you know, and, you know, I'll share with you guys just the crypto piece of this, right. Is, when I purchased my first crypto, it was because it was just a, this kind of cool thing, right? It was, it was kind of like getting my first shell hit Adidas from Run DMC, right? <laughs> like, it, was like, it was like, if you don't have those shell heads, you know, you, you're not in the game. And so I remember hearing about crypto. It wasn't, you know, 
um, I'm dating myself a little bit, but there was a, wasn't a bunch of internet going on. I had my AOL account. Um, yeah, dial up. Yeah. <laughs> that's that, that, my, that. U, my U.S. <laughs> robotics, my, my U.S. robotics modem that, yeah. you know, my mother be screaming that the phone line's locked up. But, um, but yeah, you know, I um, met a, a couple of guys. When I got into the gaming industry, it was a whole different world, right? It's these young young white guys and that's locked in rooms coding and 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 their discussion is different you know you get into a new environment the first thing i'll tell everybody if you get into a new environment a new job a new anything keep your mouth shut and open your ears because man the knowledge that you'll get um is is mind-blowing right and so I, so so i just started listening and everybody was talking about this thing called um, Bitcoin and you know this is cool. This is a technology cool thing, and um, you know back then you know you're talking about three and eight dollars you know for to get a Bitcoin right, and that was like, like oh I said I'm getting me a Bitcoin you know and that and that was the cool thing and you know I didn't know about reading the white papers I didn't know about um I, I didn't know anything about investing I didn't. You know, there was a guy named um, uh, John Tunney who was a who was a mentor. I, I invested my first 401k, um, and I didn't even know what it was because the CFO said, "Hey, you want to do 401k?" And I had to go in his office and say, "I didn't even know what that was." Like, and so then then that that was the first time that I did that. But but when I started looking at cryptocurrency and Bitcoin back then, it it was this new cool thing that nobody respected or knew about. It was like, a, it was almost like, you know, fake money, right? And and so I, I was buying Bitcoin. I was hearing about it. Um, there was no, everybody out, everybody in traditional investing didn't, it was just a joke. And that was kind of how I started. That was my first um, Bitcoin um, purchase. And you had to buy Bitcoin at that time from, from another person. You couldn't even buy it. There was no exchange. So, so that was um, my first step into that. So over the years, um, you know, from the infancy of it being $3 and you looking into it from now being $19,000 today, what, um, what, yeah, what, what kind of um, trends have you um, basically observed and lessons learned during the journey of it just basically exploding and then shooting back down and then going up again? Um, I, I learned that digital currency, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is risky. It is, it is, is a very risky investment. And um, if I had to look at the, the stability of it or the instability of it is driven from somewhere. So I'm a question first. I ask questions about everything. So, so my thing is when it, when, when it went up, super excited, crazy, everybody's having parties in the technology <laughs> industry, we were having crazy parties, right? Like the technologists, because remember, Bitcoin was a technology-based thing. It wasn't even, so, so the geeks were like, hey, you know, this is incredible. The world's about to change. Crypto's going to take over the world. So my question was always, why? I would ask these really, like, but, but why is it happening this way? And that's when I started hearing about, well, you got to look at global, Im global impact. What's happening around the world? Because I, my mind hadn't got to a point where I could think outside of the, I wasn't thinking about outside of the U.S. Like, mm, right. Um, and then I'll never forget this, man. Somebody sent me a YouTube video a few years later about how digital currency was moving or, you know, it wasn't say Bitcoin, but digital transactions were moving quickly. And the fastest place they were growing was in Africa. Mm -hmm. Blew yep. my mind. Like, yep. like Africa, to me, Africa was this third world country that, you know, because I had never been to Africa, you know, and everything else, but I'm just sharing you guys, this is my, my mentality coming from the projects of Baltimore to getting a little bit of opportunity, right? I got a little opportunity with an intern, but mentally I hadn't, uh, I hadn't traveled a lot. I hadn't explored a lot, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm listening to Biggie. I'm still listening to Biggie and, and Jay, Jay, and, and nobody's talking about this stuff about, um, Bitcoin and, and yeah. digital transformation. And so I'm still struggling with where I'm from to thinking that I still don't realize what, I, what I'm involved, I, involved in until now I got people talking about, oh, 
digital transactions are happening in Africa more than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. They're they're using cell phones. First cell phones came out, they were doing transactions with farmers. And, you know, that's when it just kind of opened me up to say, okay, I'm not thinking about this right. I'm, I'm not thinking about how big this can be. And that's when I started to realize um, there's a global um, opportunity here. And, and um, we're talking about giving people who could never get a bank account the ability to do a transaction. Yeah. So, so there was this window that like, it just kind of opened my eyes up to, now I see why people are afraid of this. Because this would, would change um, financial transactions globally. And so, so no, it's never going to be easily accepted. And I, and once I got over that, I started, when I started looking at those trends where it would go up and it would drop, um, I started to associate it with either, you know, how, you know, regulation and other things would happen around the world. And I said, okay, I got to pay attention to this because the dips were, were major, but the, the climbs were incredible. So now it was like, okay, how do I start estimating the climb? How do I, how do I look at what's happening? And so I started doing some, so I have a, um, you know, when I started looking, I would look at global financial trends from every major con- country in the world mm-hmm. and look at what they were about to do. And then I would just monitor Bitcoin. And so, so just by asking questions, I started just looking at what would happen. If something big happened in, in Britain, um, you know, or something big happened in the U.S. where we were about to go to war, I started to see Bitcoin do these these weird ups and downs, and it start it started showing me what the trend really is. But I'll tell you guys, and I, and everybody here listening, I am a crypto cryptocurrency maniac, but I still believe from a stability standpoint, if you are new, um, the 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 stock market and other investments in the U.S. are going to give you more stability to learn. Once you learn that, you then take that learning into crypto. And, um, and, and it's a little bit, and, I, and I'm going to share some tips on that and, and what you should start with um, in a little bit. But that's, I still think that overall, even as a crypto investor, um, you know, you know, there's, there's some foundation things you need to have and know and be aware of. Yeah, you actually, uh, oh, you actually saw something, a video on um, some, some finance dudes talking about even in 2020, what's the quickest way to take a million dollars and like to give it overseas, like the quickest way right now. And someone was like, get a bag of cash and fly it over there. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's why. Uh, the Concord uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but seriously, because if you try to wire it. Fly um, a pri- private. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if you try to wire it and the conversions and this and that, you know, we, mm-hmm. we've lived yeah. in overseas and how that stuff works, even when it's our own bank account to a, you know, a foreign account that's kind of like American back. It still took like 48 hours. Um, right. But cryptocurrency is getting to the point where it's, it's automatic. It's, it's instantaneous. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I just wanted to, 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 to backtrack real quick um, and kind of have you give the definition of cryptocurrency. Um, and Bitcoin, because people use it synonymously. However, Bitcoin is just a type of cryptocurrency. So if we could actually mm-hmm. break down what crypto is and, and then talk about the different coins uh, such as, as Bitcoin, that would be great. Cool. No, that's great. So, so I want, you know, even in that definition, because I know everybody today is using tools like Cash App and Venmo and Zelle and everything else. And I want to get a differentiation between digital digital currency and digital transactions and cryptocurrency. Um, Because a lot of people don't realize that you're doing digital transactions and you're doing digital payments, like when you're using PayPal and Cash App and and Venmo. So those are digital, you're doing a digital transaction um, and that's a digital currency transaction. And so, so the, what that, the, the different, the key there is, is that you're sending money to somebody, but to have any of those accounts, when we talk about uh, digital currencies, like uh, the PayPal's, the Venmo's, the cash apps, is that you have to link it to a regulated bank account. So you're, you're linking to a regulated entity that's still 
is controlling um, how that transaction is happening, right? So every, all the rules of your bank and any institution govern those digital currency transactions. Now, when you look at cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency is, is a currency transaction, and we'll talk about the details of what it is, but if I want to send somebody, uh, you know, a million dollars, I want to send you a million dollars, it's deregulated. And, I, and you need to understand the regulated versus deregulated piece, because um, if you're regulated and you're in, let's say, Bank of America, and I have it linked to my Venmo account, Bank of America regulates everything I can do, how much money I can send, um, how it's, how it's the checks and balances of it. Cryptocurrency allows you to do a deregulated transaction. So I could send Jason, Reese, and Hakeem a million each. And that is directly between them and me. And there's no governing regulation that stops me from doing it. And they have that money. They can withdraw that money. They can move that money anywhere in the world. They choose without the governing guidelines. You guys talked about 48 hours. You talked about, you know, in the US, if you do a deposit over $10,000. So, so deregulation is powerful. And I want you to think about the ability that if you, if you had 100% control over your financial um, income in a transaction, you can do business around the world right now. Like right now today, China, India, you know, I work with people all over the world and we, we do business via, via digital currencies and that freedom allows us to do transactions, do business and, and do some really, really cool things. Understanding, so now when we talk about Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the largest uh, cryptocurrency. It's been around the longest. It has the largest market cap. It has um, the, the global, and we have countries now that accept Bitcoin as a legal currency in the U.S. Um, my, my wife's birthday was this month, and I went to Reed's Jewelers here in Florida, and they accept Bitcoin. Um, so there's stores and, and places you can go and actually buy things even in the U.S., but in other countries, it's a, it's a globally accepted um, um, currency. The key is, is that Bitcoin is based on I don't want to get too geeky, but it's it's based on a technical algorithm, um, and 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 here's the simple way to think about it. There's a bunch of think of me, Hakeem, and Reese as computers, right? We all are our own central um, computer, right? And and if you're listening to this, think of you being a part of our network. We're, we're this is Diversified Gentlemen's network, and you're a part of that network. So let's just say Reese wants to send Jason a hundred dollars. He has total ability to do it using Bitcoin. But the moment he goes to, to send that $100, all of us own the ledger. The ledger just says everybody that has a Bitcoin, they have a line item in the ledger. Now, we don't know your name. We don't, we don't tell you if you can do it or not. We don't. Our only job is to validate that the $100 you're sending, you have it and you're, you're sending it to somebody else with what we call a wallet. So when Reese goes to send that $100, everybody listening right now, if you were a part of that network, it's gonna send a note to all of us to say, does this wallet, Reese, it's his private key, does he have the $100 to send? And does Jason have the, the ability to receive it? And if, if it all checks on every single one, it must be perfectly exact correct. If we all say yes, 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 and it's a thousand of us, it'll send that money. We don't know Reese's formal name. We don't know, you know, we just know that he has a wallet that has money and it goes across to Jason. And that process of validation, think of it, it's just kind of like a trust. It's a, it's a secure trust network. But if everybody's computer doesn't say, like, let's say one, one of us is off, one ledger is off that transaction will stop and it cannot be sent. That is something that, that we, it's called a blockchain. I won't get, get into details, but that blockchain is what makes um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency um, come into mainstream. And that's why today um, we have all the major banks with a Bitcoin, a blockchain initiative because of the security with Bitcoin is more secure than any bank in the world. Oh, wow. Because it's, it validates, it validates not just on one, Bank of America has Bank of America computers that they're doing security on, right? But what if every Bank of America transaction had to be validated by every bank in the world, right? 
the moment that one is off, it, it kills that transaction. And that's why we blockchain the back, the technology behind Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is now being used around the world for securing everything. And in the, in the future, we'll have uh, contracts, Ethereum, other cryptos are based on the security that it has. And so cryptocurrency in its core, is, a, is it's a currency, it's a digital currency that, that we can turn into real U.S. money or global money anywhere around the world. It's very simple. It just does a massive checks and balances to make sure that it's secure. And um, that is, that, and it's decentralized. You don't have to um, go and wait 48 hours to do a wire transfer. You don't have to have an AC, you know, hope the ACH went through. Literally at this moment, I could, you could send money to somebody. They'll have it in their wallet. It's approved on your wallet and that money's sent. So, um, you know, I hope that was clear just to break it down. I want to try to keep it as simple as possible for all of you. But remember, it is it is clearly from where when I started to today, um, Bitcoin digital currency is a way that is going to scale and it's scaling around the world. And it's something that we all should be in. We all should have a part of because it is going to ultimately support the the um, 22 billion people around the world that are unbanked that can't get a bank account, but they can still do a transaction. Some of you listening, if you know, look, I live, I'm from the hood. There were people in the hood that you, you know, y'all know that you, once you've messed up your checking account a little bit, you couldn't, <laughs> you, you couldn't get about another bank account, but there are ways today where now you can actually with digital currency, we, we, we'll start to see it for those who are underprivileged around the world to be able to do transactions, which is exciting to me. I think that is, um, about global financial security that that people can have. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so looking at now, we look at you know we talk about Bitcoin a lot. You touched on Ethereum. So right now, people see those as the as the, as the big two, the big two cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. It's so like gold you, is over. Yeah. So you being in this space, outside of those two, let's say I'm a regular regular user and I got some Bitcoin and I get a little bit of Ethereum. After that point, what's next? You know that there's some fun stuff <laughs> happening, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, so so here's the thing. You know, and here's here's the entrepreneur in me, right? The first one, the first of anything, right? The first, you know, you know, Nike had the Nike Air, right? And then Michael Jordan saw the Nike Air. He came out with Air Jordan, right? And so, so everything gets better. We started off the internet with, um, we had Netscape, we had Yahoo, we had Google, right? You know, Apple was never the first. I, I, the first um, iPod wasn't Apple. The first cell phone wasn't Apple. You know, there were cell phones way before. It's, it's not about the first. So for me as an entrepreneur, I'm never, I think the first is great. I think they teach and there's ways to learn. Um, so Bitcoin taught a lot of people, how do we make digital currency faster, better, more efficient, more secure? And so when Ethereum came out, they, their whole thing was, contract their backbone was how do we use the security of bitcoin to build a, a digital contracts platform that's really where it came from and now you see them growing up but there's some other cool things you know litecoin litecoin is um and you know and i'll get into the details of some of it but you know ethereum you know was up i would never forget this they were up seventeen thousand percent from 2017 to 2018 because there were a lot of traditional businesses trying to figure out how to use that coin to secure other things like record deals, labels, contracts. I didn't, medical information was trying to, they were using the, and so there was a lot of investment. And then you had Litecoin come up and, and Litecoin, I look at who created the coin. So it's research, right? Who created the coin? Where are they from? So, so Litecoin was from an ex Google guy, a guy that was at Google that said, man, you know, um, you know, how do I take what Bitcoin's done and create a new audience? And, and his, his whole audience was more about how do I improve on the technology to make it faster and more efficient? Um, but he ended up creating something that people said, oh, wow, this is getting better. So, so remember that things are created and there's something that's going to be better after. So I'll go Litecoin, Neo, Cardone. I won't go through the details of each one, but there's one called BitDegree. BitDegree is the first blockchain coin for online education, 
right? And so in 2020, they 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 started growing and people start saying, man, this is the future for education. How do you secure digital education products, right? And so that's the foundation. But um, I have about 10 of the 10 coins. I'll, I'll go them really, really slow for you guys. So Ethereum, um, of course, Litecoin, uh, Neo, uh, Cardona, Cardona um, EOS, Dash, and Bitdegree are, are kind of some of my cores for 2020 because I'm seeing the market cap and the investment in them um, be high because people want to use people want to use the coin and people want to use the technology behind the coin. Um, Neo is the largest uh, digital currency in China, um, and so I'm always looking globally to see what coins are being used by other countries as well. And the U.S. is we are behind Way in, when it comes to to digital currency globally. So when India, I think two years ago, India. India and Japan all decided to start using digital currency as a standard. Like you could legally go to that country and only you could do everything on, on digital currency, on, on cryptocurrencies. I'm sorry. And when I saw that, I said, man, why are we behind? And if you're on this and, you know, I'm not, I'm somebody that understands that fear, you know, people do things for two reasons, two reasons. Pain and pleasure, okay? Um, think about this. If I have told you guys years ago that you would get into a car with a total stranger and let a stranger drive you somewhere, right? And, 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 and you know, a taxi is different. You know, a car with no markings, no anything. You're going to get in that car and you're going to let a stranger drive you somewhere. That car has not associated with any company or anything else, but on your phone, you're going to, you're going to have a stranger pick you up and take you somewhere. You would say, I'm crazy. You said, there's yep. no way. Like I'm from the hood. Yep. I'm from the hood. Yep. And in the hood, we used to have this thing called the dollar cab, the dollar cab. And, and the dollar cab would take you a couple blocks, but you was nervous. You were nervous. <laughs> Cause I mean, these are the drunk dudes in the neighborhood who had cars. Right. So, so then you say, I'm going to get in a car and even have the discussion about that car driving without me touching the wheel. Insane. The, the, the logic of you would not allow yourself to say a car will drive by itself. So why are people afraid of cri cryptocurrency when I'll never forget when Goldman Sachs and all the big banks were, were just downplaying cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. That's trash. That's this. And and I'm like, well, why are they doing that? Because globally, I started, I see China, India, I see big world, but London now taking advantage of it and doing it. Why aren't we? And then you realize um, if, if digital currencies happen and anywhere, anywhere, if, if it's not regulated or controlled, those industries lose money. Mm, absolutely. Post office, right? The post office is a government agency. Who in the world would say we'd be sending it? send a mail and email, you know, mail email. And that would be the, the downfall of, of the post office that we would, we would have, we wouldn't be writing letters anymore that like those things happen. And as an entrepreneur, my, my core thing is problem solving with innovation. And that's what I do for companies, fortune 500 and fortune 10 companies. When I'm working with their CEOs, it's um, why won't you be, be gone in 10 years? So why won't you be, and, and, you know, I'll just use a quick example. So, you know, you guys know General Dynamics, right? General, you know, you guys are military guys. And I want to thank the diversified gentlemen for their service, because all of you guys have served and thank you for that. I appreciate it. Appreciate but, that. And so, and so General Dynamics built the first fighter jet, the F-16. They had, the, they were a massive manufacturing business in the government. And they did it with, partner with Boeing and everything else. But today, General Dynamics is more of a software company. They're, they're more of a government applications company. Um, and people say, well, how, you know, they, if you look at their revenue back then, um, it was, they were the, the, the core builder for the, 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 the F-16, which was a global powerhouse um, aircraft. But what happened? Well, what happened is you had companies like um, Raytheon and stuff like that, 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 
that were younger companies that started coming up with more innovative technologies. You got companies like Northrop right now going through the same thing where who in the world would have thought that like, you know, Northrop Grumman does, works with space as well. And, but SpaceX is not even a government player. But they just took $2 billion from the big government yep. entities we know that build the innovations that we've, because here's the thing is that the problem is that if you are not always looking at how you can become more innovative, it scares you. It will scare you. And so the banking industry until recently, okay, that's why you now have every bank having some type of digital currency initiative is that innovation and change is scary. And when you think about digital currency, literally it could create, it could restructure the landscape of investing in finance in the United States. It has around the world. And it's not something to be afraid of, but it's just something that's happening. And what I want for people, people that look like me, um, we have typically um, for different reasons said, if they're not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. Exactly. And when I say they, you know, and I and I'll just say clear people, right? So so if clear people don't do it, we're not gonna do it. Because we are there are things in our makeup that says, well, oh, well, that's bad, that's that's risky, or or that's this, and, and, and we lose because we don't know where to look to find our truth. Right. And they may not look like they may not look at somebody like me or, or you guys for truth, but then things are moving and happening around the world and we miss. So by the time we get we get involved, by the time we buy Bitcoin, it's fifty thousand dollars a coin, right? By the time we buy a cryptocurrency um, at you know some of the newer currencies at nine dollars, they're they're nine thousand dollars, right? And and that's what I, a story I remember. I tried to get everybody to buy Bitcoin. And when it was about $150, I told all my friends, I said, I bought this thing and at $3, I bought some more at nine, I bought it at 10. I said, just buy some, you know, I'm like, it's, it's not expensive. Just buy it and sit on it. There's something happening. I don't know. And, you know, I never forget um, a young, a young kid that was one of my interns at Disney. Um, and he, you know, his dad was, um, his dad was worked for the, for um, Maryland sanitation. And, he says, okay, I got a little bit of money. I'm going to buy some. And, you know, he, he, um, he bought some and he says, you know, what is this? It seems kind of cool. But when he bought it, he bought it. At, I think he, yeah, I was looking up the, uh, when we were talking years ago, he bought it between a hundred and $200. Right. When it, the first peak was 9,000. Yep. Remember that. So when it hit 9,000, um, he was able to tell, he, he bought five coins. His parents are sanitation workers. Like his parents are making 20,000. My dad worked at the post office back then. I think my dad was making $35,000, right? So, so imagine um, this crazy thing that, you know, just one, you know, his mentor just told him to do it. He did it. And now he's at $50,000, more money his family has ever seen. So, what I want to encourage everybody looking today is, is that um, if you don't learn anything else from this group, learn how to make decisions and research things on your own and, and not just follow the crowd, because I promise you the crowd will lead you to broke. And, and that's, that's um, something that I just, I'm just like, look, you know, do the research, do your work, because just like we'll, we'll hustle hard and our people are, we will hustle hard, right? I want to move from hustling to building, right? And, you know, we talk about, oh, I got to hustle. I got a side hustle. I got to, no, let's hustle and build. Let's right. become entrepreneurs yeah. because people are doing it. And, and digital currency is going to be, going to be a big player of, of what this economy is going to look like, I think, in the next 10 years. Absolutely. I mean, you, man, you touched on a lot. So, yeah, so hard work will never get anyone rich because our people um, since we've been in this country, you, no one has worked harder than we have. <laughs> and look what, you know, so we, we, we have to get out of that mindset of, you know, great grandma keeping that money under the mattress and the attic or whatever um, in that tin can above the, the, the refrigerator. 
um, getting that job, getting that second job. Um, and then obviously more importantly, doing all that, making ends meet, but wanting to look rich. Um, so extending themselves financially to get that, that new car, um, but still live um, in that apartment, you know, 4B um, and basically have a landlord. So uh, a couple of things with innovation, the, the, the clearest, I think, loser that everyone deals with right now is Blockbuster and Netflix. So uh, 15 years ago, um, the typical thing was, you know, going to Blockbuster on a Friday, getting that new release, keeping it for two days and returning it uh, Sunday morning, you know, getting in your car. Um, and, and 20 years ago was getting that VCR, hitting rewind because they'll <laughs> charge you extra. Um, but right. now, right. you know, right. you, you have you have a TV, you turn the TV on, you have a selection to click Netflix and then boom, you know, you pay $15 a month and um, you select the right thing in there, something that everyone uses, it's changed the game. Uh, and, you know, it's a great company to invest in. Also, the EV, uh, uh, the electric vehicle market where, Everyone's trying to fight that the you know the gas companies and all that old money because like you said they're not they're not into that market that field so the Teslas of the world um, and all of the innovation that comes with it with the autonomous driving um, it's I mean, it's the new wave and sooner or later it's going to bust through that glass ceiling and it may be with the new administration but that's one of those companies too that. I think it's at the infancy stages, not really the company of Tesla, but I'm talking about the market. Um, it has so much room to grow. So I, I'm trying to think what, what and you kind of touched on it, and this is for all you guys, what tips would you give those who look like us where it's, look, understand you have a job, you have a nine to five. Um, we understand, you know, you're working on knocking out that debt, you're putting money, into savings, but the next step to build quote unquote generational wealth is to take um, take the next step and invest. And investing in the definition is taking a risk because saving is taking that money, putting it right there. And you know, anytime you need it, that money's right there secure. Investing is saying, I'm gonna take that $100 in the hopes of it becoming $110 uh, getting some dividends, compound interest, and then in you know twenty years, um, that a hundred dollars is now fifteen hundred dollars. I think yeah, you. Scary I part think is you, the twenty years part. People get twenty years. People say that's a long time to do something. But when it comes to crypto, twenty years from now, how far are you gonna be behind? You know exactly. what I mean. Regardless of yeah. what coin you get into, if you don't get something right now, how's it gonna look twenty years from now? You know, are you going to be regretting? Like, a lot of folks, I'm sure, way back in the day, regretted not coming up, investing in Yahoo when it first came out. You know, with that and that, how fast that grew. So with cryptocurrency, right now, I still see it as infancy. You know, I, the whole world hasn't, you know, um, collectively accepted it just yet. They're coming on board. I read something about, I think, in the, on the world stage of um, GDP, crypto may be at 1%, something like that. Oh, yeah. and, uh, so you yeah. imagine 1% right now where, the, where, the, where that money is. So you imagine 20 years from now, even double, even go to 2%, how much that's gonna be. So if you're not getting involved with that today, no matter what coin you get involved with, that 20 years is gonna be a lot hurtful right uh, later on if you don't get into it right now. One thing that, that digital currency allows, which stocks are now starting to adapt, is being able to buy coins fractionally. You don't necessarily have to buy a whole coin, one. So you can buy it fractionally. And then two, you can get and you have a plethora of options when it comes to digital currency. And I know Julius can definitely um, attest to this. It's, I mean, you have a lot of options. Obviously you want to do your homework. You want to know what you're putting your money into, like what technology specifically is that coin um, uh, featured around or, or, or um, working towards, but let's say you can't afford Bitcoin. Say just Bitcoin is just too much for your taste. You can look at Litecoin, you can look at Ethereum, you can look at NEO. Um, there's a lot of different options 
Um, and it goes back to having skin in the game. You got to take that risk. You got to have skin in the game. Um, I'm pretty sure Julius, when it was at three bucks, you know, he wasn't thinking, man, this thing is going to hit $18,000 one day, $19,000 I had one day. had to know that. You know what I mean? I wish I would have known that. He had a time machine, man. Yeah. Doug. Should have bought the DeLorean. Yeah, exactly. So you definitely have to be able to um, – to be able to pivot and Reese's uh, example, and it's a, a tell o uh, 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 old tale when it comes to Blockbuster and Netflix now. Like that mm. is the go-to example mm. because these guys were put out of business <laughs> by Netflix. Um, and I love bar- Blockbuster. I love Blockbuster, you. but Netflix them. destroyed them. Um, Amazon yeah. has pretty much destroyed a lot of brick and mortar a store so it's being able to not only accept change and take the risk but you gotta you have to be able to consciously pivot towards the future yeah Hi, Hakeem you said it. you talk about pivot I think the biggest pivot we we need to make is um where we spend our time to create more options right because let's be honest I mean you can spend your time um, looking at TV and doing all these different things, or you can spend your time, spend a, you know, all of you are cash app and, you know, my hairstylist, my barbers, everybody who's sending cash app money, right? You can buy Bitcoin in cash app now, right? So you can buy a fractional fraction stock in cash app. So I'm telling even my family who's still some in the hood and I'm saying, hey, in your cash app, spend, you know, you, sp- you just sent so-and-so $200 for your braids, you know, let's, let's invest in yourself $20. Exactly. Right. So, so it's not hard anymore before, you know, you had to have an investment account, you had to have Coinbase and there were so many barriers to purchase now with fractional purchases across crypto, there is no reason for everybody not to own some. Exactly. And I think that's the, the one thing that um, and then, you know, stop spending, you spend, we spend so much time not talking about this in our community. We don't talk about um, just basic financial principles. And, you know, during COVID, I, I was literally talking to, to my family, like people are making millions Dang. where we're sitting looking, at the, news. We're looking yeah. at the news. We're caught in the news. And, you know, and I just hit this real quick. We're caught in the news on COVID. We're caught in the news on racial racial tension around the world. We're caught in news on the election. We see yep. all this energy. And in the background, I'm watching money. <laughs> I, you know, and I'm like, hey, I know that all this is happening, but guess what? We just made 20% over the last 90 days. And so, you know, and I'm telling my wife and my mother-in-law, and I'm saying, hey guys, we have to shift where we spend our energy. We need to be aware of, um, but I want you guys to know that there are things happening in the world that we're not exposed to. And it goes back to exposure, right? And, um, you know, and this is from somebody, guys, and I'm just sharing this with you guys. This is somebody who, you know, in May, I lost my mother to COVID. So I'm not saying, I'm not telling you this, but, but the, the wealth that can be generated will help my mother's legacy and my legacy. Yeah. So, so there's a different discussion to be had because we are passionate people, but what are you know you going to leave behind? What are you going to leave? Cryptocurrency is a way to secure, uh, secure legacy dollars. Yeah, because there's some big things happening, and I think that you know who would have ever thought Bitcoin would be at nineteen thousand dollars? Right. Like, and we're in a ter- recession. We're like in a terrible, terrible time in the world. The world's falling apart. But there are people that there were, were more millionaires made over the last ninety days. When you look at what Bitcoin has done, and and guess what, those millionaires aren't right driving a Bugatti, right? They, my whole dream was, my dream was this: I left a contract, and I'm a consultant. I work like everybody else. I have a company. I walked out on the National Seashore, which is here in Pensacola. It's about 15 miles of nothing but beautiful white sand. It looks like sugar and this emerald blue water. And I came down here to visit. And when I looked at it, I said, man, I said, I don't want to be 65, 70, 80, hoping I can do this. Yeah, exactly. 
And I go to the beach and people, and, and I invited both my whole family here. And I told them, I said, you can't be whatever city you're in, whatever hood you in, whatever you got to get out and see what's happening around you because you will not have perspective. And that's what my uncles were trying to tell me when they were, you know, before they, you know, we were in, in Baltimore was that if you don't get a different perspective, you are stuck. Digital currency is a different perspective and there's so many ways to do it now. As long as you got a phone and the internet, you know, you can learn. Yeah. And, and, you know, some of the, you know, I mean, some of the key things that are out there are, are able to help you learn quickly, but it's, it's, it's podcasts like this and, and um, teams like this, that, that it's incredible. There was nobody that looked like us talking about this when I, when I was coming up. So I'm excited about it guys. And yeah. Great job, Michelle. So, Nan, great job. Man, we appreciate that. I mean, when it, when it comes to um, before I, I said, uh, my cousin basically said that if you don't have, uh, if you can't afford to lose, you know, $5,000, you can't afford to make 50. And I think it goes the same with research. So, um, you know, the, the black and brown investors chat that we have, a lot of people I get with, um, I ask uh, what they think of it. And they're just like, I think it's good. It's a lot of information. I don't got the time. Or, you know, when people are deleted, I'm like, so what's going on? You didn't like it. It's just too much. I just come forward, blah, blah, blah. And I think now the adage um, should be if, you know, if you can't afford to basically research 30 minutes, you can't afford to make 30,000 because I, I just don't, when people say they're too busy, I, I'm just trying to think what they're consumed with for 24 hours because you know a lot of the stuff I listen to it you're not going to the library and getting a bunch of finance books right exactly especially in the chat you could just click on the links that's being sent and 50 percent of the content is online so now you have you know you're watching YouTube so a lot of times I'm putting videos on in the shower or I got it playing on a TV yeah, and it's just, it's just playing in the background. Yep. It's just playing yeah. in the background versus, um, or vice versa. You know, I may have a football game on TV and I have the the video on my phone. So I just mm -hmm. think, yeah, I mean, if, if you're too busy to, to do research, you're too busy to get rich, basically. And I, I, I'm, I'm just, yeah. I, yeah, it just blows my mind. But yeah, it goes back to, and I think we've all said it, it goes back to that shift of mentality, right? You got to want to want it. Right. If you right, don't right. want it, you're not going to look for it. Black and brown investors, like you said, Reese, we put a lot of content out, a lot. And it's as simple as clicking the link, saving it to your favorites. Even if you don't want to read it right then and there, save it. You know what I mean? Or you can start it in the message. But either way, the information is out there. If you want to learn, you'll, you'll seek it. And if you really don't understand it, you'll ask questions to, to try to understand it better. Yeah. Um, it gets to a point to where you can only do so much and you hope right. that someone will take that information. Um, I, I just don't believe that anyone is that busy throughout. I don't, I don't care who you are. You can find time. There's always time. Yeah. Um, and somebody's calendar tells you, right? Hakeem, you're right. Like somebody, somebody's calendar will tell you I tell people this, you show me your calendar and I mentor a lot of people in business and I say, hey, look, you show me your calendar and I'll tell you what your bank account looks like. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that easy because it's the level of, now I can show me your phone and your screen time, show me the freaking apps you're spending time That's in it. and I'll yep. tell you what your bank account looks like because you know, my thing is broke people have the op most open calendars that you can imagine. Mm. And being busy, somebody tells me, well, I'm too busy. I'm like, you can't tell me about busy because my day starts at six in the morning hey, preach. and I got four or five companies and I got a hundred employees around the country and I'm on the phone. I said, oh, so you're so busy. I said, well, at 10 o'clock at night, I talked to India because they're 14 hours ahead. So what's on your calendar? So you must be rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what do you mean, Julius? Yeah. I'm like, because your calendar will tell me what your bank account looks like. And they get, a, some people get offended. And I'm like, don't be offended because if you don't value your time, and, I, and I'll share this story with you, I'll never forget this the rest of my life. And I give her a shout out. My cousin 
um, Pamela Gilliam had saw me on a, a co commercial spot for the game. I worked, I worked on Monday night football for Disney, right? And we did a local spot and, you know, me and her were distant. We hadn't really just, we just hadn't talked a lot. She was a, a businesswoman doing some great things for Oracle and stuff. And I'll never forget one of our first calls. And she said to me, well, I run a consulting business. And I'm like, well, I don't know what consulting is. Um, I work for companies. And she says, well, well, it's, it's, it's simple, but, you know, based on what you do, Julius, you know, what is an hour of your time worth? I was like, huh? I like, what do you mean? No, like, like in consulting, we charge per hour. So I'm just trying to, based on what you do, because you do something every day. She says, what do you do? Like, and um, at the time I was a game designer, she says, based on what you do, what's the hourly rate in which somebody would pay for that value? And it, it, it shocked my mind so much that over the years where I realized you, if every hour of your time was worth a dollar figure, how would you use it? So, you know, uh, you know, today, you know, an hour of my time is worth a, a, a very expensive amount. So therefore, how, what I put on my calendar, I don't just say I'm busy. I put on my calendar the things that earn the value of the time that it's worth. Right. So, so when, so all of you who are, if you can't do it, I, I'm a crazy podcast listener, right? So you got your iPhone, you got your podcast, you got YouTube. There is no reason for you not to be rich. Exactly. It's really not. And like, like you said, it just goes really to like nine to five um, for, and it sounds bad for like, you know, the minimum wage going up um, and, for like these fast food workers who, who's been hit real hard. Um, you know, I heard a great quote that you're not paid for your time, you're paid for your worth, right? Because how many people could do that, that job at that cash register? Um, everyone, basically. Everyone, so it, yeah. it's, right. it's the worth and, and how do you get that worth? It's, it's, it's waking up early, getting as much knowledge as you can, uh, turning that into experience, and then vice versa, having it recycled. So when you when you uh, when you go somewhere, people understand your work. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, it's just um, it, it's it's just one of those deals where uh, kind of going back to the innovation and in, in crypt, crypto and digital currency versus cryptocurrency. Uh, if you would have told our grandparents back in the day um, <laughs> about credit cards. A debit card, mm. putting putting money um, that that a hundred dollars you just made is going to be attached to a piece of plastic, and you don't have to pull out your wallet and count your money. You take this plastic, you swipe it, and the bank knows how much that was. They would have said, "No, thank you. I will use. Mm. I don't trust that." You right. Know? Yeah. Um, That's the devil's now, work. <laughs> Think about that. Think about yeah, I know y'all had those grandmothers that put that money up up in there. Yeah. 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 There you go. You know, oh, it's your birthday again? Let me, Let me okay. get this money out real quick. But, but, but just imagine now you go into to the gas pump um, or you go into a restaurant and they say, I'm sorry, we don't take credit. You're going to look at them like, are, are you kidding me? You know what mm, I mean? Right. You know, I'm never right. coming back here. Um, so People just have to understand that. People just have to uh, not, they got to have that thirst for um, information and learning and being, no one has ever been wealthy by mistake. You know, granted you have inheritance and people just kind of just lucked up in their lineage that they received a, a great amount of money. But those who've actually earned it, no one has got it gotten it by mistake so you have to have that that drive to say you know what there's something big this is this is the life I want at this stage I want to be on that uh white sands beach um working calling my own hours you know working 20 hours a week by the age of 50 this is where I'm at now so this is where these are the steps I need to take ASAP and if you're married, you know, you got a significant other, you need to let them know, all right, are you, are you good to go with this plan, with this overall outlook? All right, so this is right. what you need to understand. I'm going to be working 70 hours a week. You know, my time is going to be very limited. Um, 
but here's the ultimate goal and then take it from there. And then understand too, that I am not going to have to have, you know, this car I have is I'm just going to keep it. I'm not going to get into a car note because that additional money is going to go into investing. And then that's going to speed up the um, wealth building process too. No, that's yeah. awesome. All right. So let's go around. What we like to do is just give something tangible for the, the people to take with them um, on the topic we just discussed. So what would you recommend someone to do right now today that's never who do, that doesn't have one uh, coin, one piece of crypto? Um, the first thing, if you don't do anything else before that, you before our voices go off here, Pick up your phone. Um, if you have Cash App, um, which is a, a very quick way, or Coinbase, um, buy your first crypto. You can buy a frac if it's twenty dollars, if it's fifty dollars, if it's a hundred dollars. Buy cryptocurrency. Buy your first cryptocurrency so that you can just say, "Hey, I'm in the game." I think being present, being present has power, right? I believe when you're in the game, then okay, now. Um, let me start doing some research. And there's some sites, coindesk.com, which is a great information site. If you want to start learning and listening, go to their um, kind of 101 um, there and, and start learning about it. But but just buy a little bit. If, you, if you're new, just buy a little bit every pay, right? While, while you're buying your stock, you know, buy because here's the thing. It's so easy. Buy fractions of crypto and buy the top 10. If you don't know what the top 10, you can go to Coindesk. Um, they'll have the top 10 that are most successful and, and um, coins and just buy, buy fractions of those. But but get in the game. Being present has power. I, I was always taught that by some great mentors of mine is that um, be present because when you're present, you're going you're gonna to feel a pride in that, that I'm, you know, when somebody talks about, hey, Bitcoin or digital currency, you can say, hey, I'm in, I'm in. And so right now get involved because ignoring it and not seeing it is like um, allowing, I believe, um, when we ignore education, ignore finances, ignore things, it's like allowing poverty in your life. And mm -hmm. so don't be on the outside just because you're afraid of the education um, and use tools like this to, to learn as much as you can. But, but get in the game today, right now, buy your first uh, cryptocurrency so you can be proud that you're a part of it. Um, I would say uh, my advice um, don't be scared to pivot, man. Um, man. Open yourself up to change. Open yourself up to something new. Um, if you're if you're not in the stock market, start investing in the stock market, and then slowly progress into digital currency, or vice versa. Start in digital currency and slowly uh, slowly uh, progress into the stock market. But um, when we said it again, you want to have skin in the game, regardless. So um, step out of your comfort zone and. Um, Stay vigilant, and I promise you won't fail. And I would say, you know, in an age where information is almost instant, ignorance becomes a choice. So like Julia said earlier, go out and research these things, learn about them. There's, every coin has a white paper, they have information on them, they have history on them. So go back and actually read about them and learn them. Learn what they are, learn uh, what that use case is. Is it a privacy coin? You know, is it a decentralized coin? What is it? and you decide this coin is comfortable for me, then go ahead and put money towards that coin, just a little bit. I wouldn't worry about the price as much as what it is right now, it's was too expensive. Like Hakeem said, it's fractional. You just worry about how much you have to spare to put towards that, and you can dollar cost average in. You may buy a coin today that's $500, and tomorrow it's 550, you may say, oh man, that's going great. It may come down to four something, you buy it again, you dollar cost average in. But the biggest thing to do is get in the game. Do not left on the sidelines, 20 years from now, you're going to be looking back like, oh, I could have had a full, full grown tree by now if I'd have planted a seed, yep. but you didn't plant that seed. So get in there, exactly. research, yeah. and then get them seeds planted. Exactly. And what I have to um, all those uh, so called busy people is try to cut out a time, just like, just like a budget, cut out a time in their day. Um, and this is what I always tell people how about you wake up early? What time do you wake up? You wake up at six. Set your alarm clock for 5.30 where everyone's still asleep. It's real quiet and do your 30 minutes um, of research. That goes for anything, for working out, people too busy for working out, wake up earlier. Um, you know, people don't like to hear that, but I think that as far as, um, you know, self-growth and self-improvement, that's a sacrifice that will definitely pay dividends uh, in the long run with just getting stuff done.
All right. So, all right, that's our episode. We appreciate it. We definitely appreciate you, Julius. Yes, sir. Um, Thanks for coming through, man. man. It was great. Look forward to having you back. Uh, Make sure you like the episode and you subscribe. Peace. All right. Thanks, guys.